talk about engagement and commitment. So I'm just going to kind of start talking about where we were at Valencia when we started this transformation. And it sounds like you guys were there too. You may have, and it, it's interesting how maybe a Title V or a Title III or any of the things that are happening. There's lots of side projects that are going on that are not part of the institutional um, work. It's these side titles that we have. The folks involved in the title activities swear everybody's involved, right? We swear, I swear, Title III has everybody. You know, we think that's the case because it's all about our world. It's about our experience, right? So if we're involved in these initiatives, we think everybody has the same experience that we're having, and we know that's just not the case. Um, at Valencia, you can see, um, before we started achieving the dream, we had all these little satellite operations that people were involved in, right? <laughs> people were involved in Title III, Title V. People were talked to, talk, involved in the expanding the technology. People are involved in uh, professional development. But none of it was part of the central core mission of the college. Um, accreditation came up a second ago. Oh my gosh, that's how come we focused. We actually took all of this work that had to do with learning and made it our central mission and took Achieving the Dream and put it with our College Learning Council. Oh. So our core workers for this work was our College Learning Council. Our shared governance model has five governing bodies. One is our College Learning Council, which is all about learning and teaching at the college. Um, we also have another one that the, we have the Faculty um, Association, which is the Faculty Council, is our second governing body. Our third governing body is our Board of Trustees. Um, we also have our, our College Planning Council, CPC. And then our fifth one, I always forget this, it's not the President's Cabinet, which is what a lot of people think. It's not that. It's um, something else. It's gone. But it's the fifth one, and it's really, really important. <laughs> it's extremely important. And I'll remember it when I'm not standing here. So, um, <laughs> I'm sick, and it's, I'm on floor to Um Leadership team. For Achieving the Dream, when we started this work, we did all of this pre-work, and, and we needed to figure out who was going to continue to lead this work. As I mentioned, without everybody involved in this job, this was not going to get done. We were so lucky to get the, the Vice President of Student Affairs as one of the, the leaders of this work. In addition to that, like I said, we were going through major administrative changes, right? We had a brand new um, Chief Learning Officer, which is our Vice President of Academic Affairs. So rather than have the new person coming on board be a part of this, because you, know, you never know how that's going to be perceived, Right? We had somebody who had been in academic affairs for quite some, quite some time, been involved in the titles, right? been involved in a lot of different work. So Anne Puyana, our academic affairs assistant vice president, was on this team as well. She knew the history of the college. She also was a PAT faculty member for us. Um, so she had a lot of different experiences that added to what she was bringing to the table when we were having our conversations. Then, um, then it came me. Um, I had to apply for this position, um, just like anybody else. We had opened this up as a position. It was the project director of Achieving the Dream. And um, I was at the right place, right time in my life. Um, I had earned tenure a couple years prior to that, and I was on the smallest Valencia campus. I already mentioned that Marina Clendon and I were in that department. So I didn't have the battles that a lot of people remember from 20 years ago. Our, we actually have faculty members, still to this day, um, West Campus, East Campus, they don't talk because it's something that happened 20 years ago and they're not really sure why, but they still don't like each other. <laughs> so, I mean, these entrenched, these things are so entrenched in our culture that we had to find somebody that was kind of not really involved in that weirdness because I, I was on the Winter Park campus, so I wasn't necessarily friends with anybody from East and West that had been there for over 20 years. So, I mean, I knew them, but they weren't my best buds, so they were, nobody was concerned that I was gonna start making East Campus do what West Campus was doing, or vice versa. So it's really important when you're finding a leader in addition to the other folks, you have to figure out what are the pieces that are gonna be the biggest importance to make this happen. 
Um, I did not come up with this plan. It was Joyce Romano and Ann Puyana. They hired me, and I'm thrilled, and I had the dream team. I was so lucky to get involved in this work. The other thing was is that we came up with a philosophy early on. I do not like the word buy-in. Why would I think that would be offensive? It's like you're selling something. Somebody's going to buy what you're selling. That's right. I already have it set up. Y'all just have to buy it. <laughs> that sounds like you're not even trying to challenge me intellectually. You're telling me you have all the answers. Now you just want me to buy that product and use it, right? You have all the answers. So to me, ownership is a bigger and better way, in my mind, to represent that. If you would say to a faculty member, we have ownership in this process together, it's very different than saying, will you buy into this? It's a very different way to get things done. So to us, everything that we did had to have the users, end users, anybody who was going to be leading this work, their fingerprints needed to be all over it. The only way to make that happen is to make sure they were part of this conversation, to make sure they were engaged, make sure that they were work, working towards this, make sure that they had the administrative support to be involved in this work, whether that means to get them a substitute for a day so they can go to a seminar. My dean was fantastic. I'll get you a sub. Go to this because I think it's going to be really important for our future and helping our students. So you want to keep that in mind as the, the folks that are helping with the faculty transformation. Help them do what you need to do and they need to do to make this happen. It's everybody's job. Um, so there you go. So um, it's all about ownership for me. Complicated structure, don't get dizzy. Um, what we also decided was we needed to figure out what committees needed to be formed. We needed to figure out how to manage those committees Right? Because communication is key. If we're going to have ownership, we've got to communicate and we've got to have organization. The left hand side are the coordinating teams. So remember, I said supplemental learning was one of our strategies, learning communities was one of our strategies, student success was one of our strategies. We also felt like we needed to be focus groups. Um, hugely important to get the student voice engaged in this work. So we actually hired somebody to come in and train faculty on how to do focus groups, which is what this was. Um, community focus groups are different than student focus groups and faculty focus groups. Public Agenda does a fantastic job on training uh, folks, institutions, on how to engage in the community. They've been doing it for years. Um, they are wonderful. Um, they did this for all of the Achieving the Dream colleges, and I still and I know it's something that they still intend to do. Um, so community focus groups are wonderful. We also had a SAS implementation team. This was going to be our data planning structure. Um, we, we had some failures with that, and I'm still a little torn up about it. But anyway, that happened. Um, it was there. Um, then we also had our data team, which is really the group that did the work. Um, they are the ones that ended up collecting all the data, and these are the folks that really were engaged in the process. They were engaged in figuring out how to study these things to figure out what happened. Okay. We also had the, the coordinating team, which I already mentioned that was the three people that were on the last slide. And then we reported to the College Learning Council, which was our core team, one of the five governing bodies. On the right hand side, we had consultants. Each campus, each area has a different culture, and we all know that, right? I couldn't just walk in to Osceola because I had never taught there and tell them what I think they should do. I was never, I never walked in their shoes. So it didn't make sense for me to go to Osceola and talk and engage them in a plan, in a planning process. It makes sense to get somebody who's a part of that culture to go in and engage in that, or somebody not even from the institution. It can't be somebody that has a, a reputation from within. It's either got to be somebody on their campus that has a reputation that's fantastic, or it has to be somebody from outside the institution, period. So the communication I mentioned is huge. You have to come up with some sort of communication plan. If you don't have a plan, you don't have a, the committees mapped out, there is no way you're going to figure out anything. Um, you need to have college-wide sharing sessions often. Data needs to be shared at those sharing sessions in a wonderful way, and I think a data team is a fantastic way to do it. And initially, what happened was we had our person from institutional research put all the data together, and um, I think it got a little bit too overwhelming for her, because every time
time we'd get to it, um, she'd, she'd have to put all these slides together. She wasn't really sure what people wanted. So um, we need to have some sort of a um, consultant group that helps. And that for us, it's the date. What is it that we need to make sure we're presenting about XYZ strategy? Um, website development and maintenance. I already heard about technology. Huge. <laughs> I saw that you have a nice website development. That's great, too. Uh, regular reports to the councils and the departments, and I already talked about how important it is to get the right person to go to that. 